Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Wrist Check Reviews. Today we've got something very special. A little bit different table, a little different scene, but uh, we needed something extra large to hold this. This is the world's largest Invicta. So maybe you guys have seen this thing teased on Instagram from Invicta Ryan or Bean Zimmer, Justin Zimmer from Shop HQ, or maybe you haven't seen this thing at all. Well, this is the very first Invicta wall clock. Uh, it's modeled after the Sub Aqua Noma 3. We're gonna open it up, take a look at it, talk about it, what it's constructed of, and price point for this guy. So this video should be short and sweet compared to some of my other ones. But before we do that, if you found your way to this video because you love Invictus, or if you've already seen a few of my other videos and you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I'll be releasing videos weekly with a new watch, or in this case, a wall clock, every single week. And you guys can follow me on Facebook and Instagram for the latest info on upcoming videos. So without further ado, let's talk about the packaging. I, for one, think they did a phenomenal job with this. Kind of like some renderings here of the Sand 3. Got your Invicta logo, Invincible in detail since 1837 down here. And then up here at the top, you know that it's the Subaqua. Now they're supposed to have a few other models coming and they just released the Pro Diver version. So I've got that one on the way and we'll have a video on that one coming up very soon. And I believe the other one that was announced was a Venom. Although I've not seen any pictures or anything regarding information on release date or anything like that. But yeah, guys, here we go. It's a really nice looking box. Very thick, heavy duty cardboard. So let's flip this guy over because I kind of found it funny. There actually is a model number for this quote unquote watch. So it's a 33073. The movement inside this is made in Taiwan and we'll get into that once we unbox it. So without further ado, let's pull this top cover off and see what this thing looks like. Full disclosure, I've already opened it up and uh, it's pretty cool guys. So there's that. Comes nicely packaged, really thick dense foam. Now I will say that when I received this, it was this inside of a really, really huge cardboard box with nothing to protect it from banging around, which was a little bit discerning. I got lucky, mine ended up showing up in good shape, um, but I've seen a lot of people in the Facebook groups Invicta watch collector groups, things like that, where their hands were missing or chronograph subdials were missing. Again, mine arrived in perfect condition, but it is something I think should be noted. So I'll remove this top cover here. Really thick styrofoam, and then they have this extra little piece just protecting the face of the clock. And there it is, everybody. Really, really good looking. Following right in suit with their watches. This clock is big. Let's get it out of the box and we'll take a more up close look at it. All right, so here we are. We've got the Subaqua Noma wall clock out of the box. You see how nice it looks and how all the finishing techniques come together and it really makes this thing pop. First thing I noticed right out of the box, a lot of people were asking what it was constructed of. So this part here, the actual surrounding of the case and uh, actually into the lugs, this is stainless steel. Now it's just a shell that kind of covers all the way around the clock. Your crown is plastic. The crown guard is plastic. Function pushers are fake. They do not rotate. They are plastic. Now on the back here, you guys can see this stainless actually stops right here and then everything back here, the case back is plastic. Really gives that illusion that it could be screwed off like a watch. You've got your Invicta Sub Aqua branding there best under pressure and then this is your battery door let's see if you guys can see inside there so that is a Youngtown 12888 movement inside there it is a Chinese movement but the nice thing is it's high torque so you get that nice sweeping on the dial and it only takes a single AA battery it's nice that you won't have to replace multiple batteries one AA change it out you're done just very well executed in my opinion with plenty of room to get back there so coming back to the face of the watch, you can see your bezel. You actually have the three little raised areas here around the bezel, signifying it's that Noma 3. Really cool looking crown with crown guard over here. And then your function pushers. None of those actually spin or operate. They're just there for looks. However, they did put the Invicta logo here on the crown guard. And all of these are mounted into that stainless steel case. 
The bezel does have some texturing here on the outside. You can see you have your minute markers all the way down to your 15 minutes, as well as your chronographs. And each one of these hour markers and everything that you see that has this green luminous look, uh, including the hands and on these risers on the bezel, they actually are luminescent, so they will glow once they're exposed to light at nighttime. So there's that sweeping seconds hand. It is the high torque movement, like I said, so it gives that really cool effect. The dial has been really well done. You have all of your dragons, sub-aqua emblems all the way through the dial, and you can see that depth. Each one of the hour markers are raised, and it just really makes this thing pop when it's hanging on your wall. It looks really, really high-end and nice. Speaking of high-end, the price is a little high end. When these were first released, they launched them at $200, well, $199 and some change. And that's a bit pricey, or a clock in my opinion. But it is Invicta, it's the very first one they ever did. It's a sub -aqua Noma 3. If this thing was made entirely of stainless, you would really have to be careful where you mounted it. Just a standard drywall anchor is probably not gonna be enough. You would have to mount it into a stud, which would limit your options of where you could put it. So I like that they put a little bit of the stainless on the casing outside, but kept the weight down as much as they could by using plastic in most places around the clock. You do have that high polishing on most of the plastics here. All in all, it's awesome. Being an Invicta collector, I had to have one. And I'm sure most of you collectors out there feel the exact same way. As far as value for money, I think to the Invicta collectors out there, Yes, 200's a bit high, but we all still bought one. I mean, they sold thousands of these in a matter of minutes. So in metric terms, this guy comes in at 485 millimeters. Let me grab my tape measure. We'll just throw this guy up here and get a couple measurements. I think they claim online it's 19 inches. I'm getting about 19 and a half from the uh, side of the clock to the outside of the crown guard here. And then from lug to lug, it's just going to be a rough measurement here guys so bear with me close to about 22 inches from lug to lug and if we do the traditional 10 to 4 right at 19 inches so that's probably where they're getting that number and then for the depth sitting on this table to the very top of the bezel we're at five and a half inches and if we go to the top of one of these risers we're at about six and three quarters so let me know in the comment section below if you're going to be purchasing an Invicta wall clock. If you like the video, smash that like button. And just remember everybody, buy what you like. I'll see you on the next one.